From previous discussions, we already learned the basic physics behind a galvanometer, and its obvious application is in measuring direct current. Now before we proceed, let me introduce the concept of shunt, and it's a general concept in which you provide an alternative path. For example, you have a blood vessel, and blood flows through this vessel, but suddenly, this part gets ruptured. So while the surgeon is fixing this, the surgeon will provide a shunt or an alternative path while this portion here is getting fixed. In circuit diagrams, a galvanometer is usually represented by a capital letter G enclosed by a circle. But in our class, we will also represent this with a needle enclosed by a circle and inside that circle is also a resistor to denote that it has an internal resistance. We could either use this one or this one. Analog galvanometers has this what we call the scale. Basically, if this is the needle, it actually points to a scale. Some galvanometers only deflect to one direction, so its zero reading is right here. So when current passes through it, it will move this way. For example, this is your galvanometer. When current passes through this way, then it will deflect this way. But when the current passes in the opposite way, then obviously this will not deflect. However, some designs of galvanometer have zero reading at the middle, so that when current flows this way, then it will be deflected to the left. However, when current flows this way, then this needle will deflect on the opposite side. When an ammeter is used to measure current, it must be connected in series with the circuit so that all the mobile charges will pass through it. However, it must not affect the current of the original circuit. Therefore, an ammeter must have a very low resistance with respect to the original circuit. So for example, this is the galvanometer. And it has an internal resistance. So we represent its internal resistance as R sub M, the resistance of the meter. Let's represent the full scale deflection current as I sub M or I full scale deflection current. We represent it with either I sub M or I sub FSD. Now this I sub M is the full scale deflection current, meaning to say when this amount of current passes through the galvanometer, the needle will deflect to its maximum value. For example, you have a scale like this. I sub M passes through it, then it will be deflected to its full scale. Otherwise, if it's less than I sub M, then it will be just deflected probably halfway or before the full-scale deflection, something like that. I sub M actually sets a limit for the maximum amount of current that the galvanometer can handle. However, when you provide a current greater than I sub M, this can uh, destroy the galvanometer or it can melt the coils of the galvanometer. So in designing ammeter, we should prevent such enormous amount of current or current that is greater than full-scale deflection current. So for example, this is your test circuit. It can be a component or a battery or a sophisticated circuit. So if you directly connect this to the galvanometer and it draws a current I, so this current I will be read by the galvanometer. However, when this current from the test circuit is greater than I sub M, our galvanometer might get broken or it's coil might melt and so on. So in order to protect our galvanometer with excessive current, we will be providing an alternative path or a shunt. So ideally, the shunt must have a very low resistance. So if you have an enormous amount of current, then it will pass through this shunt instead of our galvanometer. So we will be providing it with a small resistance. And we call this resistance as the shunt resistance or R sub SH. Apparently, this I will now be divided into the current that will pass through the shunt or let's represent it as I sub SH 
and the other one will be I sub M. So basically, this setup is our basic ammeter. So let's derive an equation to determine the value of R sub SH when we have an estimate of I. So for example, we can estimate that our test circuit has an output current of 1 milliamp, 10 milliamp, and our galvanometer can only handle 0.1 milliamp. So we could design an ammeter in such a way it can handle such amount of input current. So first, the potential drop at the galvanometer is obviously V sub M equals I sub M R sub M. And the potential drop at the shunt is V sub SH equals I sub SH R sub SH. Now at this junction, obviously, since they are connected in parallel, since the galvanometer and this resistor is connected in parallel, then they experience the same potential. So I can write V sub M equals V sub SH. So plugging this expression here, I sub M, R sub M equals I sub SH, R sub SH. Using the junction rule, notice that the current I that flows in this junction is divided into I sub SH and I sub M. Therefore, using the junction rule, I equals I sub M plus I sub S H. So my goal is to derive an expression so that we can determine the value of the shunt resistance as a function of the input current from the test circuit. I can design an ammeter that can handle an input current with value I given the value of R sub M and I sub M. So in our setup, the current through the shunt is actually irrelevant. So I can plug this to get rid of I sub S H. I minus I sub M R sub M. So I now have an expression for the shunt resistance. To interpret this equation, if you know the value of the internal resistance of the galvanometer, then you can actually design an ammeter that can handle this large amount of current even if the full scale deflection current is just I sub M. So you do this by adding a shunt resistor in parallel with your galvanometer. Let's have some example. Convert an ammeter with full scale deflection current of 1 milliamp and coil resistance of 100 ohms to an ammeter that can measure 0 to 10 milliamps of current using a shunt. So writing down the given, the full scale deflection current of the galvanometer is 1 milliamp and its internal resistance is 100 ohms. Now, when we say that the ammeter can measure 0 to 10 milliamps of current, then we have to prepare the ammeter in such a way it can measure 0 to 10 milliamps of current. So, in other words, we, it can handle a maximum current of 10 milliamps. So, I'll just write I equals 10 milliamps. Though, ideally, I should run from 0 to 10 milliamps. I'll just write 10 milliamps because if it can handle 10 milliamps of current then it can also handle lower values of current. So we have our derived expression R sub SH I sub M I minus I sub M So plugging in the values we have 1 times 10 to the negative 3 ampere divided by 10 times 10 to the negative 3 ampere minus 1 milliamp times 100 ohms. R sub H is then equal to 11.11 .11 ohms. Let me show my old multimeter to you. Notice that I can vary the range of current that this meter can read. In a way, this is how an Ayrton shunt works. So an Ayrton shunt 
is used for multiple range meter. So in this design, you have a galvanometer. And this is our test circuit. But before you connect that to our test circuit, you must provide a way that you can vary the value of the shunt resistance. You can connect this to the circuit. You must have a shunt with various values of resistance. These resistors have values R sub A, R sub B, R sub C. Though, if you total them up, that would be the value of your overall shunt resistance. So apparently, this could mean if you try to connect it here, then you can have, just for example, 0 to 1 milliamp of measurement, and then here 5 milliamps of measurement, 10 milliamps of measurements so on so this is just a clever design to vary the range of current that the ammeter can handle that's why it's called multiple range meter so i leave this as an exercise so you can practice deriving equations so that given a specific amount of current you can actually derive an expression in terms of r sub a r sub b and r sub c for our shunt resistance don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!